Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by SurveyMonkey. Go to try.surveymonkey.com slash twist and sign up for a free trial. And MailChimp, manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send 12,000 emails per month for free with MailChimp. Hey, today on This Week in Startups, it's our news roundtable. Peter Horan, the former CEO of About.com and angel investors on the program. Jason Nazar, the CEO and founder of co-founder of DocStock, is with us. Tyler Crowley has some insights. Lon Harris is reading the news. we got a lot to discuss. Stick with us. It's what it's all about, man. Hey, shit. Money is the root of all evil. What? Hey everybody, welcome to This Week in Startups. Let's see the wide shot. We're in our new studios and there is the wide shot and let's see the wider shot. The even wider shot. So if you're wondering why it's just a little bit echoey here today, it's because we're <laughs> testing out our new studio. Apologies for that, but it's going to be a great program. Um, today on the program, uh, Peter Horan is with me. Peter, welcome to the program for the first time. Thank you, Jason. Fun. Yeah. And so, Peter, you're formerly uh, CEO of About.com and on the board of a bunch of companies and an angel investor. Yeah, I'm on the board of LendingTree, the mortgage company, uh, FunctionX, which is Bob Sillerman's new company out of New York. Uh, ran IEC media and advertising properties. Uh, as you say, serial entrepreneur, serial angel investor. Perfect. Hey, and Jason Nazar is with us. Welcome back to the program. Always great to have you on. You too, Jake. Thanks. Uh, of course, you're the CEO and co-founder of Doc Stock, where people can get all great uh, forms and documents and not have to spend a lot of money on consultants and lawyers. In part, yes. In part. Lon Harris uh, here to read the news, as always. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. What do you think of the new studios? Very impressive. It's it's great. And uh, I'll tell you one thing I love is parking, adequate parking all around the building. Oh, yes. Tons like and dream. tons of parking is a dream. Uh, a Santa dream. Monica, not so much, but uh, Culver City, tons of parking. Tyler yeah. Crowley, you're here with me again, yes. as always. Yes. Awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, on the program today, we're going to talk about a lot of news. Yahoo's debuted some stuff. Google updated their reader. The Jobs biography is selling. The Verge launches. Tons of tons Groupon. of exciting. The Groupon, Groupon IPO Groupon. is going we got to talk Groupon. We speak. But most importantly, I want to tell you about SurveyMonkey, SurveyMonkey, <laughs> SurveyMonkey. I mean, it's basically all I have to do. Uh, SurveyMonkey is a great product. I've been using That's it for Melchior. years. That, I, I was about to yeah. say, thank you, Jason. <laughs> they're, they're Survey Monkey. Yeah, yeah I got to get the ooh, ooh, ooh for, that, for the Survey Monkey. Survey Monkey is the simplest way for creating and distributing online surveys. It's super affordable. You can get feedback and candid opinion from your customers or employees or future customers and future employees. The free plan gives you 10 questions and 100 responses per survey. Go check out the product because it's really well designed. And as you know, we only do whitelisted advertising on This Week in Startups, which means I have to use the product and love it in order for the person to be able to partner and sponsor on the, the program. I've been using SurveyMonkey for literally three or four years. It's easy. It's affordable. Go to try.surveymonkey.com slash twist to try it out and uh, thank them on your Twitter account. Anybody here use SurveyMonkey? Yeah. I have a theory that you get all sponsored just that they're part of the ape family. Basically, I'm going I think that's just like every internet company yeah, that's absolutely. got some ape or chimp or chimp or You've used SurveyMonkey before and it's great. It's, yeah. you, know, you know, for that sort of in the old days, you'd have to write up a survey, you know, get somebody to do it. And it took weeks and weeks and weeks. Right now, it's like, hey, we got a question, we got to get an answer, and that's what it's perfect. Right, for. and you don't even have to go to your waste your tech department's time building yeah. the survey, and they have all these great survey questions already in the product. Now we're, so we're a premium a member too. Oh, you're yeah. premium member. It works. Oh, yeah, we used to uh, get feedback from all our paid subscribers. Ah, very good. And you can write the questions yourself. Did you see the question bank feature yet that they just added? No. So if you don't know how to phrase a question, like you want to do a demographic question, hey, how much do you make, or where do you live, or any of those kind of things, what's your occupation, they have already structured the questions for you, so you don't have to be like a genius survey. So if you really are a monkey, it's they, easy. They'll, they'll help you with a question. Use it. Thank you very much, yes. Uh, okay, let's get to the news. Thank you, Survey Monkey, for uh, supporting the program. Well, uh, well, we'll kick it off with talking about Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo on Wednesday unveiled their latest line of new and upcoming products. Most discussed was probably LiveStand, a iPad app that pulls content and video from newspapers, magazines, blogs, and it creates a personal uh, reading experience on your uh, tablet. The app is drawing immediate comparisons to Flipboard, AOL's editions, other products like that. Uh, they also introduced one called Into Now, which I thought was kind of cool. It 
automatically automatically identifies the TV show that you're watching and then shows you related content like tweets or you know hmm. blog posts or other breaking information about the show that's on. Plus, there's a new uh, Yahoo Weather and Mail apps for Android and iPads. Chief Product Officer Blake Irving introduced the suite of new products and referred to Yahoo as, quote, the premier digital media company. So what were the thoughts on these products? Did you try any out in these announcements? And uh, do you think that Yahoo's got a shot at pulling people away from more established apps like Flipboard and Editions? Wow. Um, it's amazing that Yahoo has actually released a new product. I'm just in shock. Um, and actually, you know... It feels, like, it feels like rooting for the underdog at this point. Yeah. And you had um, AOL came out with Editions, which was right. surprisingly good. Yeah. And... I think that there's an art in these companies of letting product teams build stuff and getting out of their way. And I think Yahoo's trying to figure that out. Certainly AOL has started to figure it out with a couple of good product launches. Microsoft figured it out by putting Bing and Xbox into their own, you know, sort of little boxes and yeah. letting them uh, letting them go. But well, if they have I, any hope yeah. of ever attracting good talent again, yeah. they've got to convince people that they can create a little microclimate where you know they won't get ground down by the bigger company. Right. Releasing product inside a big company is death, typically, because they make you use all their infrastructure, write a product review doc, a PRD, all this kind of stuff, and it's it's death by a thousand cuts. So um, it's interesting to see them actually come up with it now, right as this week uh, private equity firms are signing their confidentiality agreements to basically sell off the Asian assets and mm-hmm. restart this company. Yeah. And I think AOL might have something to say about them being the premier uh, digital content company. Right. And interestingly enough, when I met with Yahoo when we were starting Weblogs Inc., Yahoo obviously, um, Yahoo made a last minute attempt to buy Weblogs Inc. People don't really know that, but they were having big debates of if they were a content company. And we went to a meeting there, mm-hmm. and I was with Brian Alvey, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I said, we had like four meetings back to back, and I said, I bet you in this meeting they're going to say they're not a content company, they're an enabling company. They come in, we're not a content company, we're not competing with you, we're an enabling company. I said, watch this meeting, they come in, they're going to say, hey, we're a content company, and you know we're competitive, but we can collaborate. Same exact thing happened. And it's great to see that they're finally admitting they are a content and services company. But their, their head of product, Blake Irving, is awesome. I've, I've known him personally for a lot of years, ever, long before I ever got into even tech. And I think if anyone's got a chance to help really spur an effort to build amazing products within Yahoo, he's going to do it. I mean, he's everything you'd hope for in an executive being entrepreneurial and just no stuff done. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, there's your first, uh, welcome to the chip jar. There's 10 bucks. (laughs) Um, Tyler, any thoughts on Yahoo and uh, trying to release some product? Um, product? A side thought, which is Jason and I, Jason Nazar and I were at the Google LA office opening yesterday. Uh, Yeah. I forgot to go to that. And quite impressive. Really large building. The binocular building the over binocular on Main building. Street. The old Chiat yes. Day office. The yeah. yes. Day office, yeah. yeah. And Gross. they had signs inside that were like, Idea Week, December 1st through whatever, and come and bring your ideas, and if you want to launch something new, and yeah. that kind of thing. So it's, it was also very much like a recruiting effort. And ah. I think, yes. and I don't know how many Yahoo, LA, Yahoo has a large office in LA They as well. did, yeah. I mean, they were running a lot of content out of there. And who was the guy? Lloyd, um... Lloyd Braun. Lloyd Braun was like sort what, of... But that's what blew him up. If you remember, in 2005, Yahoo was on a roll. They were, you know, they were really the hottest company out there. Yeah. And they said, oh, we think we're going to open a second headquarters in L.A. And, and do open, content. And do content. And maybe you want to go to L.A., maybe you'll stay in Sunnyvale. Yeah. And it was like, I walked, the minute I heard that, because that was when we were talking about selling about to AOL or to the Times, ultimately... And I said to the AOL guys, you guys should go home tonight and get down on your knees and thank God that Yahoo is so stupid because right. they just destroyed the company. And because everybody starts worrying about, do I have to move to L.A.? Where am I going to put the kids in school? You right. really Nobody think that's about. what destroyed Yahoo? I think that, well, that was, it was, it was among was many mistakes, certainly. Oh, but if you, if you look at inflection points on the curve, that was one of those big things. All well, of a sudden, nobody thought about the business anymore. They thought about where they were going to live. And there was this massive debate going on. Are we a content company or are we a services company? Yeah. Are we going to improve our email client, improve search, uh, improve you know photo sharing, or are we going to come up with puppets reading the news? You know, and, and that was like this, this big religious debate. Yeah. Ironically, now you look at YouTube and with their recent flurry of deals that they're doing backing content providers. Yeah, um, premium channels. 
and premium channels, essentially YouTube is doing that without having to say they're a content company. They're basically fronting money for production and then yeah. distributing That's not a it. Totally fair comparison. And they're selling it. YouTube started as a content company, just not their own content. Well, but it was a platform company. Yeah. And so they added to that platform company this new spin, which is being like a publisher and fronting money. Yes. That's a distinct difference. I mean, what is the difference between YouTube right now and a studio or a content company? You know, a television studio? Uh, there is none. YouTube, Google is a content company now. Anybody disagree with that? YouTube's a content they're company. They're financing content. Yeah. Right. Well, no, but this no, no, no. The and they're selling the ads against though, it. Yeah. Like they're producing those shows. Like they brought people in and then they worked out. Here's what you know. Oh, you have fine brothers. What's we love you. Here's between, what you're gonna do. What's the difference between producing and having a rep who comes and says and evaluates your content and says, here's how much money we're gonna advance. No, I, I agree with you. I think. I mean, I, it's a very fine line. I mean, they're a production company. Mahalo. Now, uh, if we do a partnership with them. And other companies who have already been announced, Machinima, or whatever. Wrong. There was a wink. Uh, <laughs> for <laughs> for those for people, it. what's the difference between YouTube having us be employees of their company or just giving us the money in advance? I mean, it's it is a difference, but how big of a difference is it? And owning Zagat, which is doing reviews, and owning ITA, and owning Yahoo Finance, and incorporating content into it. So I mean, you, I think. Are you the, painting the picture that Google might be running into Yahoo's? Where they I think everybody's ago, where running they... into each other. I agree. Everybody's running into each other, and it's just, what is the party line you want to keep? Do you want to pretend that you're a content company or not? But did Google take that line of, we are not, not, not content, like, they have this religious line of, we're not yeah, content and Google for the is, longest and time. and Google is still holding that line. Is it in part because they saw the mistake that Yahoo made? I don't think they're holding that, they can't hold that line anymore. I mean, they can say that they're going to help you find the best content, but once you own ratings for local, once you own travel information, once you own visual content, you can't say that you're not in content. No, you know, I think this is actually, in some ways, this is the wrong conversation. It's not are they content. Google is fundamentally changing the rules they've operated by by the last 10 years because previously it was we're the honest broker, we see what's in the query box, we redistribute traffic to the best source. Right. Now they're very explicitly trying to drive traffic at a Google, you know, they want to own the search from the query box to the end page and keep the economics. Right. And, and they're in competition with the people where they used to send the, con the traffic. Does that mean content providers would be wise to disengage from Google? No, it does not mean that, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, can content owners yeah, trust turn, them? Yeah, like turn your Yelp. Work. Why, why do you say that? Well, I'm. I'm so, oh, no, yeah. No, why no, do you say? Yeah, yeah. Jason. Because. Give me Jason's. <laughs> yeah, Nazar. Google is a very big ecosphere, and if you create content, still the best way to get it discovered online is through search engines, which the biggest one is Google. Right. So you're saying you have to, but if you're Yelp, for example, and you've just been pushed down the page by Google Local. Should you be investing in search Absolutely. traffic, That's a or should you just say, you know what, I'm going to put my content on apps and try to route around but Google? But it's, 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 it's never either or. Right. It should be both. Okay, it but should, be that should you your should be focus forward change thinking. on a percentage basis? If you were running Yelp, <laughs> didn't you guys have this conversation on the last time Nazar yeah, was think, on the show? I think so. We had this conversation well, every time. The conversation's <laughs> becoming more refined now yeah. because things are changing. By the week. Yeah. By the week, I mean, they bought Zagat. Yeah. No, but I think you have to explicitly have a, a, a strategy as a content company of minimizing or reducing your dependence on Google. Right. Absolutely. I've built, Absolutely. Look, I've built successful SEO-driven businesses that sold for lots and lots of money. But Could About.com be built today, given what Google has done to search? Uh, Could it it'd, be, it'd be much harder, much harder. And yeah. they've yeah. lost 30% of their revenue? I don't know Something if it's quite in that much, 20, 30%? Yeah, 20 percent maybe, but it's, yeah. no, it's like, and a lot of the folks that were operating on the old Google ecosystem are getting hit. But if you look, the traffic isn't going to other content providers, the traffic is going back to Google. Right. Across, in some cases, not yeah. in the majority well, of cases. Well, let's pick, let's pick the category. In finance, it's going to them. In travel, it's going to them. In local, in local it's, going it's going to them. I mean, what's going to be left? In shopping, it's going to them. I mean, what's going to be left? They, they News money, is going to them. They spent money on a travel booking engine so they could right. you know, cut Expedia and others out of the mix. As I said, I think there's a very clear fact pattern that says Google wants to own the search from end to end. They're, they're recreating a walled garden. Right. Even though... I agree. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go but to the I can't say that any of us would do anything different if we were in their, in their position. Well, I mean, they need growth. And in order to have growth, it's going to come you know, either by launching new services like YouTube and Android, or it's going to come from taking, a, a, taking more of the experience post-search in their franchise business. Yeah. And it seems like they're doing both. Yes. What I think is they're that? trying to do a lot of things. Right. So who is a better company for a startup today to 
to align themselves with. If you're launching a new content company, should you be launching it with Apple as a partner and trying to be in the app ecosystem, or should you launch it with uh, video and be in YouTube, or should you launch it in the uh, Google search ecosystem? I, I think that's. I have to, call, I, you, I have to yeah. call Jason out on this because it was only about a hundred episodes ago. Yes. That you were adamant about the open web and not doing the app thing, right? Yes. What, yes. what changed? What changed for me? Yes, yes. Well, the Panda update, obviously. I mean, I don't feel I can trust Google anymore. Why would you invest in this ecosystem if they can turn you upside down immediately? You have to get off of the Google well, I guess the fairness there is that Apple, even though it's a very tightly controlled garden, they're very upfront from the beginning whether or not they're going to let you in. Well, I think not the great thing the is, if you think about the history of the web, when we started, you know, to put up a website cost uh, $25,000, dollars $100,000 worth of equipment per month Per month, yeah. right? Then it went to maybe twenty-five, fifty, or a hundred thousand per year. Mm -hmm. Now it's down to zero. To put stuff up on the web, you can buy a domain for eight dollars, Tumblr, Postris, yeah. whatever service, and have free, unlimited, scalable bandwidth. So then the only cost is content, which you can steal or you can write in Manila for less than a dollar a page. Yeah. Uh, so the Google search ecosystem doesn't work anymore. It's flooded. Now. Fast forward to today, if you look at the app ecosystem, what does it cost to get your app in the store? A lot. 25, 50, yeah. or 100,000 if they approve it and they look at everything. So for me as a premium content provider, if I put my stuff in an open ecosystem, I'm competing against people who are putting 99 yeah. cents of every dollar into SEO. If I put it into the app store, I'm competing against people who have to have $25,000, $50,000 a pop. I like that better. Mm -hmm. That's rigged for a guy like me. Mm -hmm. It's rigged against the little guy. Yeah. But for those people that are trying to put their apps in the app store and then they get kicked out, or they don't get featured, they've got the same complaint. So to your earlier question, what I would say the answer is, yeah. start with what problem you're trying to solve, come up with a good solution for it, and then find as many distribution outlets as possible. Yeah, that, that's what I would say. And at, what, I would say what I would say is, if today, and both you and I have built businesses, all three of us have built SEO-based SEO businesses, business. and my and recommendation... none of us believe in it anymore. Yeah, my recommendation is if I had to start a new business today, I'm not going to build a business based on SEO. Well, no. you know, or you've got to sit there and say, re redo the business plan and say, you know what, we need more marketing money up front to build direct type-in traffic. The SEO game is clearly over. Let's go on to the next story. All right, well, do you want to stay on uh, Google and algorithms? We've got another sure. story there. Uh, so Google has announced another upcoming change to its search algorithm, expected to impact 35% of all web searches. The change builds on top of the previous caffeine update to deliver more relevant, current, up-to-date results, specifically in areas like news where, quote-unquote, freshness matters. Uh, they're also including current product reviews, other buzzy sort of newsy topics. Google says the new algorithm will be able to determine the importance of freshness based Based on the keywords entered, and then way more recent or more updated links accordingly. So the example would be like a search for a favorite recipe. That's not going to change much because recipes stay the same. Search for gadget reviews, though, is going to try to find you the most recent current reviews. So uh, again, what kind of impact is this next algorithm change? Uh, it's so large. I mean, how, how, what kind of ripple effect do you think this is going to have on the ecosystem? And do content providers deserve even... any kind of heads up on stuff well, like this? And this is what I told the highest up people in Google was, I don't trust Google anymore because they're not transparent enough about the changes and that they should have a search ombudsman that, you know, will comment on these issues and they should do, you know, panda.google.com and then whatever the next one is, monkey.google.com, mm. deer.google.com, you know, uh, boa constrictor.google.com. <laughs> Every time, show us the things, have an open dialogue about those changes. I think part of what you're getting at is Apple, act, if, they don't, if they reject your app, which they do in front and not later, like right. after you've been in the store, they don't they kick you They give you the out, specific reason. And they say specifically, this is why and you're you not getting in the store. And you can email them. And you can change it. And, right. right. And Google won't talk to you. So, I mean, that, what do you, are you even monitoring these things anymore or have you given up? We monitor, I would say two things. One, first off, the caffeine update is not about Panda. Caffeine's about the amount of pages that can index and the speed. So it's not really going to think affect evergreen content as much as it will really breaking news. Do we monitor it? Yeah, But there's a really important nuance in there, which is caffeine versus Panda. And caffeine yes. is another, you know, well, I think it's a long line of algorithmic updates. And they've always been blind about what's in the algorithm. That's intentional. You know, at ISC, I ran Ask, which is search engine. And, and it's something that you want to keep the algorithm a little bit blind. So people, you don't make it too easy. Opaque. But it was always relatively fair. You, could, you, know, you, you figure out what the rules are. Right. I believe that all the evidence right now is that with Panda, they put what I call the thumb on the scale. 
right. they did that, they're overriding the algorithm and saying, we like this site, we don't like that site, we're right. changing the rules. I, right. I brought this up last week and I'll bring it up again. And, and here, here's where I agree with you and here's where I disagree. And I'll, I'll happily share the exact statistics. So from our peak this year, we're off 40% on traffic. And that sucks and I'm frustrated and like you, I wish- I'm 60% off. I, I wish that there were more clear rules defined right. so that we could know what to do. That's, that said, we still get almost 20 million people a month that come to DocStock, and right. it's because we've aggregated and built good content, and Google's a great outlet for that. And if you're the winner of Panda, you don't feel like you do Who's a winner. You, you, there are no winners in Panda. Yeah, it seems to me that they've, yeah, they've not, cut everybody one. down. The problem is, I think what Panda did everybody. is... You're capped. Your traffic is capped. You hit the same exact amount of traffic and, a day, right? And, and it may be, but, but what, but, Panda, but what, what Panda did is it hit sites that were driving a lot of content I, traffic, and they distributed it to a much larger right. set of sites. Right, so what I believe they've done, this is what a conspiracy winners. Right. No, no, no. But, no, but no, no. They, they, no. They've capped the amount any individual site can get. This is what I believe they've done. They've said... They haven't. I can, I can show you I can show you 10 examples rare, of yeah, sites there will be that some have double traffic in the last right. year. Yes, okay. but there is still a cap. What I believe has happened, uh, let me see if I can explain this properly. We lived in a city where there were 10 skyscrapers and a bunch of six-story buildings. What they've said is no more 100-story skyscrapers. Cut them in half. The max height is 40, 50 stories now, and those other six-story ones can now go up to 12 or 18. Therefore, nobody can become too powerful. You can't, and I can't, Mahalo can't have 15, 16 million, you can't have 30 million. Everybody gets cut down, everybody gets a haircut, therefore nobody's more powerful, and it spreads out the, the love. I think that's what it seems like. I don't think that was at all well, what the intention was or what the purpose the, was. But, but, but do you think like that's IMDb, what happened? Rotten Tomatoes, did that happen to them too? Well, I think that there's certain ones that, like Huffington Post, seem Wikipedia, to go up a little bit. You know? Wikipedia is a most favorite son. They, right. they got the thumb on the they scale. They always have been. And they always have been. So there's the, a the thumb on the scale for Wikipedia, clearly. But by the way, and you know, what's interesting is that was actually the first thumb that... A that product, was the first thumb on the scale. A product manager at Google said, you know what, it would be a good user experience if we showed Wikipedia first. And however they did it, they basically mm -hmm. said, okay, Wikipedia will go to the top of the stack. Right, and see, that's the, that's the I think, the hypocrisy of Google right now is that they won't have the discussion you're that we're one, having. You're saying that one product manager decided that Wikipedia was I believe the that's top the case. of the stack? I believe yeah, it could no, have been Larry Sergey You don't think it was because it was the most think, linked to site in all of the web when it was first being created? I think they, I think and because they it's a free it source of information? I mean, Wiki, I don't think anyone can argue that Wikipedia is not probably one of the at least 10 best sources did, of information online. No doubt, but it did seem like all of a sudden it became number one. No, all of I, a sudden, like, uh, Yeah, it's like, I will say, I was in a conversation with somebody, you know, inside of Google and then they said a product manager made that call. So do you think um, they did the same thing for for about? I mean, about shows up at, no, at the I can, top I, of. No, I, I, I can assure you they did not. But that was a case of under the old rules. I'll say at about we treated SEO as a blood sport. We specifically <laughs> got up every day. I mean, you know, and I always say it's like the difference is we woke up every day and said, what do we think people are going to search on? How do we write content that'll appeal to the search? How do we write a headline? Everybody else did what they were going to do. They wrote the same article or the same headline. They stuck yeah. a couple of keywords on the back end and said, ah, totally. well, here's SEO. If the, oh, over, we, me, we are all thing. guessing though, and we're all triangulating around this data, mm -hmm. and Google could just come out and say. We're going to have this person at Google. Matt Cutts is a great guy. He's friends with a lot of the people at this table. But he tells you if you have a penalty or not. It's very binary. What they really need That's is That's what to, his job is. He's the head of web spam. And he does it well. And, and I like him, and, and he's smart. Um, the thing that they, I believe they need is another person in there who will say, hey, let's discuss this month five search results. Here is a search result for how to make um, apple pie. And here's how the search results wound up. Now. We can see there's two or three in here that feel spammy idea. to me. And idea. I think the way that this person was able to get these spammy stolen results here was through these things. We are now fixing that. We're going to manually fix it. Since we're here looking at it and we know this is spam, we're going to manually fix it. We can't do that for everything, but since we're having this discussion, and here's how Martha Stewart's page is not ranking. She didn't put meta words in. She, didn't ha she doesn't have any links, and she doesn't have a Twitter button. So. Martha Stewart's SEO person, if you're listening, please You're do saying these you actually want things. them to manually change the result? I think that if they see spam, they should have a team that says, yeah, take this stuff out. Or if they well, see stolen that, that, stuff. That's what, no. Panda, that's what Panda did. No, Panda said. You can say that Panda didn't do, wait, you can say that Panda didn't do it perfectly, but what Panda did is it tried to, with an algorithm, match up what 
a set of 10,000 people yes. were signaling as spam sites. You know, there's that leaked Google document that they made right. take yeah. down mm -hmm. off of Danny Sullivan's website. But it's crazy if you look at that document. It, it literally tells, um, it says what they had all those 10,000 people, what their criteria were, what they looked for, and what they're trying to do is We've see how close the algorithm gets to that human search. Yeah. So they are doing it. They're just doing it. They're in, doing human powered the, search, which was the original thing I started Mahalo on, which is why I'm about to go crazy. Let's uh, take a moment to pause. Everybody <laughs> take relax. A take a deep breath because my head's about deep to explode <laughs> because this thing is all going full circle for me. You see, I stayed, I cr tried to create this human powered search engine and now Google's doing it and I'm going to, and then they kill my business. I mean, this is like, uh, this is like Hamlet or something like that. I feel like I'm <laughs> living in a Shakespearean yeah. novel. Anyway, taking a moment to breathe. Perhaps there was other news this week. There's there, a lot of other sure news. There. There's a lot of other news. Know. But it's going to come as no surprise. It's no news flash to anybody that MailChimp is the best way to send email. <laughs> I use MailChimp. Does anybody hear it? Do we get a monkey noise? <laughs> MailChimp. Boom. There it is. Listen, we if we Google, just if Google, up this week for our premium Mailchimp account. Oh, you did? Yeah. You went premium. I love because it. Because we're going to send out a BD newsletter every month now, and we're ah, going to use Mailchimp for it. Very good. Very good. Uh, so, you also use the, it. The Ranker big? Ezine. We do a weekly. Okay. Here's the great lists from Ranker this week, and it's Tyler, all powered I by Mailchimp. I know Mailchimp. you use it for squealing all your mailings. I, not yet. But what? When, I don't send out anything yet. I don't even tweet or anything really. But when I, I know I, you got There's not a question it's, of it's what I will use when it comes out. Uh, and you'll use MailChimp as well because it is the most affordable, pay-as-you-go, software-as-a-service. We absolutely trust MailChimp. I got SurveyMonkey behind me. Why do I got SurveyMonkey behind me? I'm surrounded by apes. Uh, anyway, MailChimp, MailChimp, MailChimp. It is free for 2,000 subscribers. It's free for 12,000 emails per month. And the social features allow you to uh, do list segmentation by cloud score, Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of stuff, which is great. If you want to just email all your Facebook followers and say, follow this page. If you want to email everybody who doesn't have their Facebook attached to it, you could say, hey, put your Facebook in here into our database. This is really powerful stuff when you start combining email and social. Um, and I do that, actually. If you're watching and you don't have any interest and that doesn't help your business in some way and you're doing a new startup, yeah. Go see how they do what they do because they do it so it's, well. It's the best design product. Uh, it's software as a, nuts. It's it's software as a service. So if, well done. If you look at software as a service, I really think SurveyMonkey, MailChimp, um, Zen, what was the Zendesk one? That's yep. really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. um, there's just like a handful of products that have nailed the SaaS experience, and this is one of them. Thank you so much to MailChimp. Basecamp. Basecamp. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a very Basecamp in its approach. It's like affordable, it works. And I've been using it for years. And uh, wow, they've reached a lot of a million users. Congratulations wow. to our friends at Mailchimp on that incredible milestone. Go ahead and thank at Mailchimp and at SurveyMonkey on your Twitter account, your Google Plus account, your Facebook. Send a smoke signal. Send a letter. Tell everybody you know Mailchimp is the best because not only are they the best product in the market, they support this show, which you love and watch every week, and you don't have to pay for. It. Thank you so much, Mailchimp, from the bottom of my heart. Okay, let's do another story. Let's talk about something we have non, to get off the Google non search Google train. related. So we'll talk about Milk, which is uh, Kevin Rose's startup lab ah, for yes. new mobile apps. They released their first product this week. It's called Oink. Oink. It's in the iTunes App Store right now. The Oink app allows you to rate things wherever you are, then aggregates these reviews using social reputation to let people decide if they should trust your judgment. So people say there's four votes. You can like, I love it, I thumbs up, I'm eh, I don't care, and then thumbs down. And then based on all that, it aggregates all those together and get you like a list of where are the best burgers around here or like what are mm. the best movies that are in theaters right now. Uh, so, you know, instead of, it, it's not based on checking in or ranking in a particular restaurant, but about like the dishes or not about a museum. It's about the specific pieces of art. Everything centered around topic hashtags such as hashtag T and then organized by distance. Uh, so have anybody, has anybody played with Oink yet? And how do you predict they're going to deal with the chicken egg problem that inevitably happens with stuff like this, which is it'll get really great if a lot of people start adding reviews, but you can't can't get people that reviews unless it's really great already. I've played with it a little bit. It makes an adorable oink noise when you get a notification. It, it does, but so if brilliant. you start getting a lot of people following you or something, your phone starts oinking a lot, and I, I had to turn that off, actually. <laughs> but, uh, Boy, is it well-designed. Like well most done. Kevin yeah. product, like most of, uh, well, I shouldn't say most, all of Kevin's products are very well-designed. He understands design. He's got that kid, Daniel Berger, I think, that works with him. So I'm, this has got his sort of fingerprints on it. But look at this beautiful page here. Wasabi Caesar salad with salmon at this tea lounge. And then here are the other things at that tea lounge that people are rating. I feel like he's reinventing. Um, and reverse engineering Yelp in a cleaner, more right. mobile fashion. So I really think it's a Yelp, I don't want to say killer, but... It's not about a location, right? It's about individual products. Yes, can, but it is around a location. Though, because 
uh, you know, th there's the risk of gaming at low volume. It's like if you only got 10 mm -hmm. reviews, then the, f the four guys that love you and the six guys yeah. that hate you, you get, you know, zero and five. Right. And, and it only starts to be trustworthy when you get 300 reviews and it sort of yeah. normalizes. And if you have your friends. So, I mean, look, at here I am at this tea lounge, which I went to actually with Owen Malik last week. Um, and I know Kevin goes to this one a lot, too. Um, it's going to show which one of your friends, I think these are your friends, but it could just be anybody, but they'll, they'll figure out a way to make top users just like he did in Dig. Yeah, I think it's this people plays in your extended right, network. So yeah. it's people you're following or following this who you This plays to Kevin Rose's strengths, which is he understands community really well, and he really understands mobile these days. And I, you know, I have to say, I've, I've been uh, involved with a bunch of angel investments, um, potential ones that were trying to do this, and nobody really did it this well. Look, breakfast, level three, coffee, level three, you score points. Yeah, you, you game pick mechanics. your areas of expertise, and then yeah. the more you do, you, re this you is level like, up in it's, being an it's expert. It's Yelp plus Quora. With Plus a little bit of Instagram and Foursquare. Yeah. It's, it's funny, really it's smart. Funny of all the companies that people use to explain what this is, like Yelp and Foursquare, and it's actually a lot of dig in it because dig it people forget was the original thumbs up right. that, that now everyone associates with Facebook. Yeah. Yep. Funny that he also has thumbs down and sideways now. Well, yeah, exactly. right. four, it's right. four levels now, not just up or down. The, the one thing I think is a real challenge for them. And is he tried be... to do this at dig. Right, and then he, yes, he it didn't work, similar. and he had, there was all this politics going on at Dig. But he, it seems like this is, I hate to say it this way, but it's a little bit of an fu to Dig because this is what Dig should have done mobily. Why wouldn't this be part of Dig? I mean, he basically something went wrong at Dig where he left or got pushed out or there was some acrimony or they wouldn't listen to him. I don't know what it was, but this is this is what Dig 2.0 should have It would have been Dig 2.0, right? Yes. Because when you're mobile, or you're Dig 8.0. <laughs> yeah, this is a long <laughs> way from. But does this feel like Dig mobile? Yeah, no, it definitely does. The one you were going to say something. The yeah. one thing I'm curious about, being in, a, in another startup that worries about disambiguation and tagging constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, the disambiguation. Well, the, yeah. yeah, well, the tags Come on, here. Give it up. That's right. awesome word. Yeah. Yeah. The tags here, are like you speak you know, of is, <laughs> is right. Is Twin Peaks TV? TV program, TV episode, or TV show. And right yeah. now you can see when you're in there that they're already like, if somebody tagged Twin Peaks a TV show and I got credit for voting, I love it, under TV show, but not TV. And yeah, I, I mean, that's be, just stuff so where people have got, to merge those tags. Yeah, they're going to have an interesting yeah. issue with trying Core to work out the kinks of that. has done that particularly well, which is right. you just basically give the power users the ability to merge tags, and then you review them, and you'll be fine. But, but see, I think the interesting question on this is how much does the audience care about the game aspect of it? You know, it's like right. I get these sort of, oh, you just passed Bob on Foursquare. Four and it's like, yeah, who I, cares? You know what? I kind of care now. <laughs> I feel like I didn't care in the beginning. <laughs> it's interesting. Are you I'm not competitive, but I just, for some reason, I was like, I wonder how high of a score I can get. Well, you know? remember, we rule. The brief, we, we rule. Right. The game mechanics can infect yeah. people. I don't know. I think it's... For I think it's four scores, younger. Four scores made that really work, that people really care about being mayor. I haven't seen that really work in a lot of other apps yet. I don't no, care I about being care a about being mayor, but they care about sort of how many points they get this week yeah. versus yeah. their that, friends. Yeah. I mean, Foursquare's sort of, game layer really works, I think. Yeah. And this, I think, is going to work as well. I mean... Kevin's, I have to what, say. How did, where do the products come from? When you, you take a picture of a product and you have to describe it, like how do, yes. how do the, yeah. there's a lot, that's a lot of work. It's, it, it's a I lot definitely of work. agree that if, if, when I wanted to say I like Twin Peaks, I, had, I actually got my DVD, I took a picture of the box, like, where, I mean, and then yeah. I said I like it. We were at dinner with Jason, and he's like, be telling one of his stories, I'm like, hang on a second, I've got to take a picture of the tuna wasabi, I've got to upload it, I've got yeah. to tile it, I've got to tag it, I've got to vote it. Uh, people do, yeah. the, with the food, anytime you go to a restaurant, I live yeah, downtown, people are taking pictures of I'm their food. dinner. I've, I've been using Instagram for that now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's something for, there's an app just for food. Food, food spotting. Food spotting. Food yeah. is a, no, Food Z I think is the marketplace for artisanal food. You're thinking of food spotting. There's another. Um, there's an Israeli company that does it, where you actually take a picture of the dish, uh, and then whenever you go to right. any restaurant, it tells you what's the best rated dish there. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people have pivoted around this, but I what I like about Kevin's vision here is it's not just for for dishes; it's for everything. It's everything, right? But dishes may be the one that people yeah. use. Well, to your point, I mean, to to make something like this successful, there are two things you have at the beginning, which is a gr a great user experience, and you have to be able to get critical mass. And because he's got such a following from his past companies, yeah. he's one of the few guys that I think can actually pull off. Yeah, but see, but a business the like first 10,000 users are free for him. 
Yeah. Whereas the first, you know, anybody else running a company has to work really hard. He's earned the respect of people. And I'll tell you, this is- And they're is, more engaged users than anyone else. it didn't help Pounce and it didn't help Dig. So I think the lesson there is, and I- It well, helped Dig in the beginning, yeah, it certainly but it, did. Yes, but then Dig made him into Kevin Rose with the big following. My point is Dig 4.0 or 2.0, whatever the latest version of Dig, even his social footprint couldn't save well, that yeah, but, product but that, or make that's that product a win. That's a different problem at that time. Once you already have 20 right. million people coming to the website, you need yeah. to figure out how to monetize it to get bigger. That's yeah. different than I want to get the Certainly. first 50,000 people using the product. My point is, you know, having this similar experience that he does, which is a big social media footprint, it does not alone guarantee you success. What it guarantees you is that 10,000 people will look at it, yeah. and that 10,000 people will either pan it, love it, or ignore it. But, but to that point, it, it should have. Yeah. Exactly. N nobody's got a big enough footprint that once the well, business is going, it's going to be made. No, you, but, but you, it is the it. advantage that you have and Kevin have is that at this point, you can launch any new business yes. and you're, in, you're going to get feedback more quickly and more sure. accurately whether that idea is going to work or not. And that's right. what's invaluable. Yeah. And I agree. then it's up to all of us to make the business as successful once that happens. I agree. I agree. I say that, but the logic, though, would be to start with rate the restaurant, get those 10,000 people rating a bunch of restaurants, and then as you start to get more critical mass, they say, okay, now let's talk about the dishes. The problem is, is you, 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 get it frag you get the responses fragmented. I don't know. I, I think it's easier to do the dish because I feel like writing a restaurant review... Because Yelp's already done it? or Well, I just feel like it's, it's hard for an average person to rate an overall restaurant, they're, you know, from service to do decor. Do you really care what somebody else thinks of the dish that much? Like, I once do, you're in actually, the restaurant, I really? I do yes. The restaurant because Absolutely. I agree, Tyler. The problem is a lot yeah, but of just the ask the waiter, what's your favorite dish? What do you no, need to no, no, look no, at no. an app to see what the best is? I'm, I'm telling you, if Tyler says to me, you have to try the uni at this place or the Spanish mackerel. And that's how that we to talk, me, too. It's not like and that's how foodies yeah. talk. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's dish specific. I just told him about Soto, and I've been raving about it, and I told him, this is the best fresh pasta I've had at an re Italian restaurant ever in my life. And he goes, he's not going to waste his time with the pizza, which I think is subpar. Right, fair point. And a lot you know? of people, I think, do already use sites, stuff like Foursquare this way. I know my girlfriend, when we go to a new restaurant, she'll check it, what the tips you still are. still with you? Well, these I know, amazing, isn't it? I can't you believe, believe you it? held on to her. Well, well done, What's going on with her? But she's into the specific dishes. She too. loves checking in on Foursquare and then let me see what the first five tips are. Yep. And then, yep. like, are yep. they saying order on one specific thing? Yeah, yeah. Yelp works the same way. People yeah. try and do that on Yelp, and the other problem is Yelp devolved into people using it as a customer complaint vehicle. It is a bitching mechanism. I, and and, the, and the, that's, it's like one helpful. star. Not, wouldn't it be helpful that there was a business that, where you could complain and, about and, 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 a business and it was kept private? Wish something like that existed. Here's the problem, I'll tell you. It's I try, I go on to Yelp, and I've been getting really into Yelp. The site's a mess because it's so old. But the reviews amongst the quality elite people are better than anything else out there. The problem is somebody has to wait 20 minutes for a table and they give it one star. Yeah, and, right. Or my point. somebody forgets to bring them a spoon yep. for 15 minutes Bingo. for their but, soup but over hundreds and of it's reviews, one star. That's leveled out. That's, that's my point. Over a critical mass yeah, it's leveled I, out. I find it's not leveled out. Yeah. Really? It's no, not but, leveling but, but, it out. But, you know, that, that's, that, the critical mass though, when you, when you get to a certain size, you know, the average ratings, you know, the people that had to wait 20 minutes or got yeah. a dirty spoon, get wiped out by people at a fabulous time. And, on, and, and you know what the problem is now? Most people have no taste. Most people are dumb and they can't people write. aren't using I, I'm Yelp propose, to leave reviews Here's my anymore. new startup idea. They're using it just to complain. It's, my new startup is fair. the 1%. So I am nasty. going to personally decide who are the 1% smartest people and good best writers in the world and that any mm. social contribution then as an API, yeah, that business you can was say turn Mahalo. on the 1%. <laughs> That's what Mahalo was. <laughs> it was. No, but I'm saying across all services. So I'll basically annoy people and say these are the 1%. Everybody else doesn't count. So if you log into Yelp, I could say 1%, 99%. But, but by yeah, the way, you know who has to do that? Stalin and Hitler. <laughs> what? You can write right, for the, the government. Over. The show is officially ends. <laughs> Whenever anybody <laughs> references me as Hitler, <laughs> we're More done. More like say the New York Times does that. Okay. They say we're going to hire the best writers and give them no, a big stage. No, but what I'm talking also about Stalin. is also Stalin. Also Stalin. Stalin. Uh, Stalin, the New York Times, Hitler, and Jason. Yeah. No, no, but like a really funny, cool Stalin. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give this away right now. This is a, um, the folks, you guys know I'm very important, right? Super very. important. So if the people, forget, if you forget, I'll tell you. You remind no, us. Yeah. No, I just thought this was hysterical. The people at Samsung are like, Jason, you're so important to us. We love you, blah, blah, blah. Here's a free phone. So they gave oh, me a free phone. Cool. I thought that was very nice. And I said, no, no, that's great. I'll give, give it, it to I'll give it to my fans. And they said, no, but we want to give you a free phone. I said, well, I, you know, I, I can pay for my own phones or whatever. I don't need. They said, so they just sent two. I'm like, well, that's very nice. That's nice. This phone, I've been using it, this Android. Have you guys seen this thing? 
it Galaxy kicks. Yeah, I've heard really good things. I, Check this out. Take a look at that. Uh, I just got the new How's Samsung the battery life on it? The battery life is, is better than the iPhone 4. I have, I've been using this versus the iPhone 4S. And I'm going to give you my God's honest review right now because they're not paying to be a sponsor. But this is a really expensive phone, so I'm going to give it to somebody in the chat room right now. Uh, so if you go to chill.com, uh, slash room slash this week in startups. You go, or you go to chill.com. Chill it. where it's the front I'll page. pick somebody uh, in there uh, randomly, or I'll have uh, Carolyn do it randomly. But anyway, this phone, the screen is a thousand times better than the iPhones, mm. and it's huge. And the Android operating system right now, in my estimation, is 80% of the iPhone operating system. The apps are probably 50%. But what that tells me is if I the got, hardware here is so. With the new OS, yeah, Android OS the, yesterday. The was hardware awesome. here is so awesome compared to the iPhone's hardware, and it's so light. I mean, take a look at that thing. It's unbelievable. It's really wow, Android. That, it's it still doesn't have the this? battery in it, though, right? It doesn't have the, the battery in it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, even with the battery in it here, you can add the battery right now to get that idea for the weight. But I mean, feel that. But by the way, to give a shout it's, out to another good startup, long time startup, Cool Iris. Cool Iris. They, they actually yeah. are doing interesting 3D modeling on the iPad and uh, the first ad that they did with it was for this phone so demonstrating phone how thin it was. Unbelievable. So anyway, hey, thank you to uh, Samsung for sending me a free phone to give away to you guys. Uh, and Samsung Carolyn, just become the best hardware. Um, yeah. Samsung's Pick fantastic somebody, at hardware. somebody uh, randomly from the audience there who has uh, an interesting observation. So you guys make an interesting observation about the news and Carolyn will uh, decide if you're interesting or not. Thank you to Samsung. Or if they want to go out with Tyler, pick them no, as no, well. No, no. Actually, Tyler's... Uh, See, people got very critical of me. They said, why are you pimping for Tyler? Because I was like, hey, you know, Tyler's going to be in Paris. It would be great if Tyler could meet. Tyler's been a little bit heartbroken these days. And I Tyler's was like, it'd be Tyler's great if Tyler... Tyler's been you know what I mean? You've been hanging out with him. <laughs> I was like, if Tyler could meet a nice girl in London or in uh, Paris and have a little couple days in Paris. And then people are like, you're trying to get, you're trying to procure for Tyler. I'm not trying to procure for Tyler. <laughs> what is this? Like, uh, I think Tyler can do just fine by himself. Suddenly last summer or something? I'm <laughs> procuring for Tyler. I'm not wow. procuring for Tyler. Your, your dog got right up in exactly. there in my uh, yeah. crotch. There we go. There's the Bulldogs. I said, I your just crotch, wanted yeah. to, if a, if a nice girl wants to meet Tyler in Paris, there's going to be a Paris meetup. Sure. Maybe you meet a nice girl. You, be staying you for go a few to Louvre. Right, so meet maybe them, you could so go with him to the, you know, the Louvre or something. Anyway. I could use an escort Let's do another. Don't Use the word escort. The word escort. <laughs> uh, can we get another news story, please? A tour guide. A tour guide. Yes. Uh, Walter Isaacson's biography of late Apple co-founder Steve Jobs sold 379,000 copies in the U.S. alone in its first six days on the market. It outsold the second-placing bestseller, John Grisham's The Litigators, three to one. It outdid the second most popular nonfiction work, something by Bill O'Reilly called Killing Lincoln. Uh, it outsold that eight to one. Uh, that's good enough to make it the 18th best-selling book of the year. The 656-page exclusive Jobs bio had the single biggest week for book sales since last November when the Diary of a Wimpy Kid book and George W. Bush's memoir each uh, outdid it. Uh, the UK edition of the book, also one of the fastest selling nonfiction titles on record, moving 37,244 copies in one week of release. So my question to the panel would be, is this just because Jobs was such a fascinating character, everybody loves Steve Jobs, or is this the media attention that has been hyped uh, over the past couple weeks about his memory? And the magnificent timing of the having thing. the book, you know, a right. week or two after Steve Jobs dies. It's like good timing. It, yeah. It they, they planned it. They, uh, he, yeah. And he was. Not that they didn't plan it. No. That they no. The release of the book. Actually, Steve Jobs did plan it for his death. He, he was. His last production. He was <laughs> writing Walter to write the book for a long time. And that's. The first introduction, I got the uh, Audible book, and I've been listening to it, and it's, it's amazing. Um, but the in the intro, he's saying how Jobs kept hounding him and went to the Aspen um, Ideas Festival in the Institute to ask him to go for a walk. He wouldn't speak at the Aspen Festival, but he wanted to talk to Isaacson about writing it. And Isaacson was like, yeah, maybe in 10 years or whatever. And he didn't know that you know Jobs didn't have 10 years. Jobs yeah. knew he didn't have 10 years. And the reason Jobs wanted the book written so badly was and I thought it was very touching, he wanted his kids to know why he didn't spend as much time with them. I mean, think about that. That is just gut-wrenchingly, I don't know. I'm, I'm still not over Steve Jobs' death. It still makes me feel very sad. I'm just glad sad. they didn't call it I died. That would have been... Uh, yeah, too soon. Uh, too way, too soon. Feel, feel way too soon. Way too soon. soon. Okay. Uh, but it is uh, amazing. The book is really good. Yeah, but I, but I think it, what, I, what I don't want to have happen, personally, is have it turn to, you know, St. Steve. Right. Because, I mean, look, I mean, but if anything, all the stuff that's coming out is about not only how everyone knew what a genius he is, people yeah. now yeah. find out that he's a really driven, intense guy that also oh. could piss a lot of people off. Well, yeah, or well, my, people consider an a hole or a jerk. Right. But one of my favorite Steve Jobs moments. Have you ever, it, can, it, can I ask a question though? Have you ever known any 
person at that level of success that somebody doesn't say is a jerk? I'm gonna probably not comment on this. No, no, not really. But <laughs> Walt, Disney, Walt Disney was a jerk. They say it about Disney. Person. Obviously, they say it about Henry Ford. They say it about Bill Gates. I mean, yeah. who, I, oh. uh, the only person I haven't heard it about is Warren Buffett. Yeah. Oh no, I actually. But who don't they say that about? I, yeah. It's probably pretty off, standard. off camera. I'll tell you a great Bill Gates screaming story that was like still. No, tell us on camera. Yeah. Come on. It's, is it over the statute of limitations? Right over last 20 years, yeah. Oh, then you can tell I, it. No, no, clearly, no, no, it's over no, 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 it was, all right. Bill Gates is retarded. Right. You don't care. All right. Classic. So, you know, the, you always know, like, when Bill is getting pissed, he starts to rock. And yeah. the faster he rocks, the more pissed he is. Right. And we're in an annual plan meeting, and there was a relatively junior product manager, some incredibly bright young woman, probably just freshly minted from Duke or Harvard. They only have right. people from great schools. Uh, and, and she's presenting the plan for the year mm -hmm. and Bill's like rocking like a sewing machine and finally he goes how long have you worked here <laughs> wow. she goes uh 15 months Bill and how much money do you make wow. <laughs> he goes you owe me two one hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars you've been stealing from me for 15 months <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, and this poor girl pees her pants, walks out, the, I think she walked out the door, out the building, into her car, and was never seen again. Wow. <laughs> that is... That was something you, you in the age. there? You saw this? Well, yeah, you know, I was in the room. I don't think even on my worst day, I've done, have wow. I done anything remotely oh, close to that? All right, so, so, but huh? we're talking about Steve Jobs. All right, so I'll give you a Steve... <laughs> I'm lost. So anyway, next story. No, 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 no. All right, look, we're doing stories. I'll give you right. a Steve Jobs up close and personal uh, story. What was I'm, the reaction in the room afterward? I mean, what happened in the room afterward? Those kinds of things happen on a regular basis at this point. That's okay, yeah, but, it was a war zone. At yeah, Microsoft. but um, you know, you know, only the strong survive. But no, the um, but the uh, but yeah, right, well, that, yeah. he meant it as a test, right? He wants to see if he can crack the person, or did he just want to destroy the person, Certain, get them out of the company? Both in that case. No, I mean, no, no. It was like. But when no. he did that, wasn't he trying to see who would stand up to him, who would bring it? No, no, no. Yeah, no. That that is there was a, there's a, there's it's a, his there's technique. A, yeah, there was an element of that culture. You just had to plant your feet and yeah. and, and stand your ground and, yeah. and fight. He wants to see like if you're fold or not. Yeah, you couldn't stand the first blast. You're out. But. Pull in the parking lot uh, at the very, very old Apple building, uh, not Banley, um, in Cupertino. Um, I, I got in the parking lot right behind Steve Jobs. And this is like when Steve had hair. Um, yeah. And he had a big Mercedes with a sunroof open. And he was yelling at somebody. And as he was yelling, he would bounce up. The hair would come through the sunroof. He'd uh, come down. <laughs> it's like, so that was a full on Steve Jobs. I think absolutely. Yeah, in order to hit the maximum potential, like a coach in a basketball team, you will see people maybe get a little hot and scream and yell. But if you win, if you win, how do, if you win, all is all forgiven. All forgiven. Yes, Absolutely. because Absolutely. if you win, everybody feels so good having won, it erases everything. Yeah. The problem is if you don't win, and I think for Microsoft, I think that's probably what led Bill Gates to... I think hang it up was like he couldn't win anymore, nah, you know, and the product wasn't that good. And I, I think it got boring to him. They, he couldn't figure out how to do yeah, tablets. But actually, I, I think he genuinely believes he's got more important work to do. Yeah, and I, yeah. Think, I think he's, he's the richest man in the, in but, the world. But, he wants I to think do. he but would, he, if you, you think he would give up 10 billion of his net worth to have created the iPhone or to have created the iPad? To I have honestly, that as part I, of his I legacy? Honestly, I honestly think he's moved on beyond that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all the philanthropy and the causes at this point are Yeah, No, I, I don't I don't buy yeah. that. Really? When you're that ultra-competitive, you always <laughs> yeah. want your legacy to be as great as possible. Right. But, but, but right. what he but wants when, part when of his legacy to be now is also what he's going to do on right. a worldwide Right, the competition scale. now is like, I can eradicate, you know, Yeah, poverty. But no, I totally agree with Jason. If you could, because, well, what does that mean, give up $10 billion? If he had get, given up that $10 billion, he'd be worth $100 billion if he had created that. Yes. So, yeah. Well, whatever. I it's think it's no. I think he is competitive. I think now he's saying, "Okay, can I hmm. change the course of a disease? Can I educate yeah. people? Can, can I?" I, I that? He's always been focused on the biggest issues on the planet at the time. Computers and computing was, is not, and now it's not. It's not. It's like everybody's got computers. You, now malaria is, or whatever it is, or yeah, water, operating or systems. Whatever. All this stuff is education. Yeah. Actually, yeah, he doesn't need making but a you know gooey. It's a matter of life and death. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do another story. Oh sure. It's a great book, by the way. Everybody should buy it. And. Uh, yeah, Steve Gates was not perfect. There's a newsflash. <laughs> Steve Jobs. 
What did I say? Steve, Steve Gates. Gates. Yeah, Steve or Gates. Their, their Steve Jobs job. or Bill Gates. Uh, so Bill the new, Jobs. new tech news site, The Verge, launched on Tuesday. The brainchild of former and gadget writers, including former editor Josh Josh Topolsky and sports site SB Nation, which has now renamed itself Vox Media. Topolsky has referred to the new site as an app rather than a finished site and said it will be an evolving, growing piece of technology. He noted in his welcome post that version 1.1 and 1.2 already in the works right around the corner. Uh, the new site includes both tech news and features as well as numerous community features and and it clearly resembles more of a magazine feel than the standard look of other tech blogs. Topolsky and the other Engadget writers, of course, left Engadget in March following AOL's takeover. Uh, and since then, they've been writing at a temporary home called This Is My Next. So thoughts on The Verge, thoughts on its new look, and what can they do as a new tech news site to set themselves apart from Engadget, Gizmodo, all the other sites in this overcrowded gadget space? Did you say he refers to it more as, as an app than as a website? I, uh, uh, that is a yeah. blog. He's, he's trying to get it away. It's not a finished website. It's not a blog. It's a constantly evolving application. Or even Yeah, platform. I have it on my screen right here. Um, and I have to tell you, um, while the content is great, I hate the design. I find this is like the Microsoft... Um, you know, Windows 8 sort of chunks everywhere, and it's like sort of like a ripoff of the Huffington Post where it just scrolls forever. And I'm just not feeling it. I, I don't know, my eye doesn't know where to go. You know, it's over designed, and how do I know which of these stories is important or not? I, I feel like it's, I would much rather prefer the blog format. The reason blog, the blog format worked was because you knew, like, okay, this is chronological, and here's what's important, you know, and this. It's great content. Yeah, There's no doubt about that. But I hate the design. Yeah, I really do. Traditional news design, right? You got to tell the people where their eye is supposed to go. Right. You got large, medium, where, small. There was a big size arrow there that said you need to read this now. Yeah. Which one? Where? To where? His credit, right in the middle yeah, of the frame. Is, the middle. Okay. Right yeah. There. So why is it? <laughs> so why is it below the fold if you need to read it right now? And why is this? The, what is this? This this stuff up here looks terrible. These chiclets with the different colors. I'm kind this of is a designer. That, but, this is a design for design's sake. Yeah. You but you, that, that's, yeah, that's but it's a horrible design. design. But, but Jason, it's a work in progress, right? Of course. Yeah, you know, the first day you launch yeah. the site is always your worst day, and you get no. I know, from there. but here's what's happening: is this is a there's a designer who's been paid two hundred thousand dollars to do this, or and the demise of the site won't depend on that. They'll figure oh yes, that out. it will. No, yeah. they'll, they'll fix it. They'll, no, they'll the site what will they be want. successful, but I'm saying the design is going to determine the success but, of know, it. But but I guess like the market. You're saying the design is not going to determine the success of it. Of a new site? Yeah, I think that this design kills it. I don't want to come back to this site every day. It's like, it's too confusing. I don't know how you consume it. Well, can you yeah, speak to the politics off, the, behind the, this, though? The, the, the links guys on the site are going to get AOL spread on social media. Sure I can. Yeah. They'll get indexed. They'll get I mean, that, that's not going to... The, yeah, the, also, the homepage design is not going to kill... We're talking tactics. Site. Go back to the, the more fundamental thing is, I think the market actually needs more good tech news. There, I think there's an absence of good tech news. It's like, mm. you know, I guess the question is gadget news, because this is really gadgets. You don't think there's enough good tech news overall? Yeah. Tech there's news? too much I'm gadget news. I'm surprised to hear that, just because I think of there's a glut of tech sites. But good is, I think, what he's saying. Yeah. No, is no, like, but a good, uh, tech card sort of went downhill, well, although I yeah. think it's getting better since Mike left. Well, actually, now, you know, I think it's getting so much worse. I think Schoenfeld is actually making it better. It feels like they're being... But here's the thing. Maybe it's maybe it's a little more editorial, but it's just boring. There's nothing interesting to read uh, on it. Like You go to TechCrunch because you want a point of view and you wanted Mike's you point of view. It's just yeah. it's yeah. boring. I, I literally... And I remember when, he, I went, I remember when he went on vacation... I thought, like, oh, well, I'm going to stop reading it, but they kept it up literally since he's left. I used to go to that site twice a day. I, if I've gone to it twice in the last month, I'd be surprised. Yeah. I just go to Tech Meme now. It, it's just there's not an editorial point of view, and yeah. that's what yeah, you want to Yeah, but that's about the business. Point. That's like what, what you know, Sharon Waxman and the rap do for Hollywood. You know, it's about the business. I'm talking about actually about the stuff. Right. It's like thoughtful, authoritative, you know. Yeah, comprehensive I mean, this is, reviews. They're really of, gadgets, and I don't think there's a need for a third site after Gizmodo and Engadget. Like those two cover it, so I think they're going to need to carve a niche for themselves. But, you know, you asked what the politics behind it yeah. is. The politics is that the Engadget team was driven out of AOL by Mike Arrington when Mike Arrington attacked them. I asked you this yeah. the they day they were leaving, and I said, "Is this because out? of because TechCrunch and you Mike were like, no was comment. attacking them, and then Tim Armstrong wouldn't defend them?" And let Mike just basically run all over them. He and always say attack were, them. He, 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 no, but if you're in the same company and you have one brand attacking another, and you don't even get a phone call from the CEO saying, "Listen, I think you guys are doing a great job. Mike is just being Mike," and you know, like it's, it, it, I'm not saying they have to tell Mike take the post down or whatever. But if it was me and I was running the show or when I was running the show, I defended my bloggers all the time, and they would get a phone call from me. I would have said, "Hey, listen, Mike." 
you, you can't behave this way. You can't attack a sister brand you, like you this for no reason. Like, that happened at Tech Runs with you and I there. Like Mike came a little head, like acted a certain way towards me, and you yeah, pulled him aside. Yeah, it wasn't for no reason. You can't came to me and said, you know what, Jason pulled me aside and said, I can never talk to you in any kind of way, negative yeah, or whatsoever. I told, but you, ha you can't treat your team members that way and have a culture. And I think that Tim Armstrong, I think Mike made it intolerable by design and basically attacked everybody in the building. Ari he went, he started at Engadget, he went credit? to Ariana, and to get his earn out and to make it intentional, but he made Tim Armstrong look like an idiot. But don't you also kind of give him some credit for the fact that he's not gonna not say his opinion just because it's part of the same company? No, I don't, because I don't think that the opinion was particularly intelligent, and I think he was just- so That's something different, though. He, that's a different he, issue. He, Mike just would manufacture these things. That's, it, it wasn't like it was authentic. Mike was trying to get himself kicked out so he could get his earn out. That's why he relentlessly attacked Ariana. That's why he relentlessly attacked the Engadget people. It was a strategic move to benefit himself, not because he particularly felt any way about Ariana or Engadget. And I think I'm it, made, sure it made Tim Armstrong look so bad you, you know you know better than anybody else that Mike always says his mind and he pisses a lot of people off in the process and he says a lot of interesting things. Sure. I don't think well, he did any. He it, I don't think he did very any. Very strategically to destroy people. He when yeah. when you're on the bad side of it, trust me, I've been on both sides and I've watched him do it to people. He will try to build somebody up, Katarina Fake, and then destroy them, or myself, or Ariana, or whoever. You know, they were writing glorious posts about the Huffington Post and you know how great AOL was gonna do until I, I don't think he tries to destroy I think he's on a people. jihad right now to make Tim Armstrong and TechCrunch look really stupid by like posting all the best news. He gets all the breaking news and he's basically naming it uncrunched. So yeah. when you go to TechMeme, you're like, oh, TechCrunch says this. And I'm like, oh wait, no, that's uncrunched. You know, and he's like specifically trying to scoop them and they have to link but, to him. But I mean, what? it's insane. But, but, but he hasn't actually changed right. from day one. No, no. I mean, I think that's actually the bigger, he's like, there was no reason why, particularly Tim should have thought that yeah. when you brought him inside oh, the tent, he was gonna- The scorpion you know, takes you across the- I river think it was the worst. It's in my yeah. nature. It's in my nature, yeah. Let's go to the next story. Mike Arrington's incredible. Uh, well, we, we, we got to talk about Groupon before we run out of time. Their initial public offering began trading on the NASDAQ this morning. Amazing. Uh, the stock was priced at $20 a share late Thursday night, but it began trading this morning at 28. Uh, an increase of 40% with a market cap of $17.8 billion. After about a half hour, the price dropped to around 26, which is where it was when the show started. Uh, it's at 26.11 uh, right the, now. It's the biggest tech IPO since Google. It is, and this also makes uh, Groupon the first major deal to price above range and trade higher since July. Uh, thus far, Groupon is floating only a small number of their total shares, about 5.5% of the total 637.3 million outstanding shares, which is the same strategy uh, LinkedIn utilized for their IPO. So what kind of message is this gonna to send to the other players like Angie's List and Zynga that we're thinking about getting out uh, before the end of 2011? And uh, what do you think drove that initial burst of huge interest in Groupon even after the drumbeat of horrible negative stories we've been hearing for months? It was the fastest growing company in the history of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and consumers love it. And this is what I've been saying all along is that, you know, yes, you can criticize a lot of things about Groupon. Yes, there's problems. Yes, the valuation is too high, whatever. Uh, the spend is too high. But it is a loved brand. And it is very hard to build a global loved brand. And it is very you valuable. Did it in two years. Right. Well, three. But I mean, it, yes, two to three years to make a global brand that's loved is extraordinary. And yeah, it may take them five more years to build into this valuation. Um, and certainly it's kind of shocking that the, the price is this high, but, and will it go down? Of course it's gonna go down. But it's a great company, and it's a company that will be here 20 years from now, I but think. See, but are they a transitional life form, or do they survive? Uh, I mean, I think this could be one of those ones where- They run out of fuel? Uh, well, um, you know, look at, look at how fast MySpace, you know, rockets up, $600 million sale, and then suddenly it's like, oh, thanks. Yeah, but, you know, right. I'm sorry, you mentioned Kevin Rose, but Dick. Dick's right. a transitional life form. Uh, however, there is a big difference, I think, between MySpace, which never really made money except for the $600 million uh, or the $900 million Google multi-year deal, and Groupon, which has made you know, a billion dollars, thirty dollars at a time, one coupon at a time. I mean, here, this here, is a phenomenon. Yeah, I agree. And they've, and they've established a category. They, exactly, that's it. They've established a category, and, and here's what won't change: the the fad of the way people buy these deals today is a fad, and that will change. What won't change is that when you have a margin on a product you sell, 
um, if you can mobilize more customers, you're willing to take less margin. And at certain times, you're willing to sell a product for less if you can bring in customers you couldn't get otherwise. And if Groupon's always at the forefront of the efficiency of selling products and services so that it best connects customers that would want the products with the people that could sell them, then there, there's always a market for that. And they'll Correct. always be the leader in that space. Assuming they can serve the merchants almost as well as they serve yes. the consumers. Yes. Right. My only point will be it's, and I've, I've read, you know, I, like everybody else, all the horror stories about why merchants hate it and it's so horrible. I would yeah, bet you for one every out of about exactly. Five hundred. I don't maybe yeah, more than five hundred. Maybe one out but of But those are the stories that get all the attentions. And if I think ten percent yeah. don't like it. They don't have to renew, and there'd still be a multi-year waiting list in every city for it. And if this is such a bad business, why is Google all in on this business? Yes. Why is Amazon all in? Why on is this everyone business? tried it? Facebook's why is tried everybody videos, going yeah. after it? It's a great business. Local is a huge business, but see, and but there's, there's no though, efficiency there, and they, they've made a. Efficiency. Yeah, but for Amazon, Google, and others, the, the barrier to entry is pretty low. Because I guarantee you Groupon gets bought by Google. Gets bought? Absolutely. Bought off Google. of the public markets? Yep. <laughs> it's not the first time a company's been bought off the public markets. Their, top, their, their stock tanks, they all of a sudden decide they're going to get a 50% premium. Absolutely possible Google comes in and buys this because... Or it's possible that Amazon buys it, or it's possible uh, that Facebook buys Peter, it. Peter, do you, do, have you used Groupons before? Yes. Or, and do you like them? Uh, selectively, yeah. I mean, I've got the app on my uh, Droid. Yeah. I, you know, I. It's not high end enough for you, frankly. Oh, I'm not that classy of a guy. Please. <laughs> Come on, man. It's a, but, these are all like sandwich shops. You no, know, no, very. No. I've seen your. You go to very elegant restaurants. You're ordering very expensive wine. No, the man of refined Come on. taste. Yeah. I mean, how? No, no. Okay, so uh, I've got a, a Groupon right now active for a Chinese restaurant in Palo Alto. Okay. Uh, I've got my my oldest daughter just had a baby. I got three Groupons for a maternity shop. Okay. Uh, you know, and it was like, you know, pay 20 bucks, get 40 bucks. Uh, but and do you think you're a bad lead for those businesses? Aren't you a good, aren't you you're a good a lead for those businesses? What are you kidding me? Businesses? This guy's got bank, man. He's uh, you know, okay, You'll spend but, double. But, but, so the, the one... The, Will you the, spend the, double at the Chinese food rice? Or you spend, uh, you spend my, just the, no, I probably would spend more than the, the, the 20 bucks. I love how Jason, yeah. like, how you can simultaneously both sides of a tense. Like, a minute ago, you're, like, the elitist, I'm the one percent, I'm gonna, now you're part of the proletariat, <laughs> and, and talking yeah, down the yeah. man. <laughs> you're like the master playing both sides of any both situation. Sides, you can't deal sides. with that, you shouldn't be in this room. Yeah. <laughs> like Geraldo at Occupy Wall Street. I mean, I'm one of you guys. <laughs> forget, the, forget the Fox News microphone. I'm one, I'm one of you guys. guys. My NetJets card no, no, is yeah. hang on, hang on, only but, got three hours left. No, there's there. actually... <laughs> But, so the, the maternity shop, I went in, they said, okay, that's great, you got your group on. However, uh, one per visit, you cannot return the goods, you, you mm. know, and, and there were so many restrictions on it. And I, so I, I said, I said, like, it doesn't sound like you're loving this. They said, no, actually, we're kind of hating this. Oh, really? You know what I think the genius part of the model, and it's kind of the evil genius part of the model? I've bought one Groupon. Um, never used it? I never used it. Yeah. And just free money to both people. They need There's got to be at least 10% well, of people that buy these to, things. They need to. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you yeah. can return it at any time for any reason. You can get your money back right now. Anybody really? who's got a group on they haven't used, think, yeah. it no, doesn't matter. Fine. They will refund your money at any time for any reason. But, refund it tonight. I guarantee they'll give you your money back. But I do. Guaranteed. Really? Remember there was somebody who wanted to sue them over this issue, and they were like, we offer money back guarantee any time. And Andrew Mason was like, why are you filing a class action lawsuit against us when you could have just emailed us and we would have returned it? I don't even think they have to. I mean, they, mean, they gave me, a, no, they gave me just, six months to use it. I mean, I was lazy. It's Groupon, not their fault. It's mine. Groupon wants to appease the customer at all test. costs. Go try to return it. Yeah, I well guarantee done. they yeah. will do it. I'll make you a deal. If I get the money back, I'll give you half. Okay, I'll take it. I'll tell you. Nice. We'll give it to charity. We should give it to charity, right? We should give all the money to charity. <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah. Whole ten dollars. Wow. That's big no, deal. no, it was a two it was like a two hundred dollar group. It was an expensive oh. group on. Oh, okay. I guarantee they'll give you the money back. All right, next story. Let's do one or two more stories and get out of here. All right. Stanford one University's in. introduction to artificial intelligence class held the largest Google Plus hangout to date this morning at eight AM. The class is two professors, Peter Norvig and Sebastian Thrun. I think it's Thrun. We use the broadcast to hold office hours and answer popular questions from students. Uh, so it's a class with tens of thousands of people following it online. There was no way to collect everybody in one place for office hours, so they actually made a Google Plus Hangout for everybody to come in to participate. All you needed to do was add Norvig to your Google Plus circle and hold then post a, a question second. on YouTube. I thought that it was like 10 people or less. Well, now you can broadcast on YouTube Live. Uh, the, hmm, I don't know the I answer. Don't understand. I don't know the answer to that. But you can't have all those max. people their videos in it. It's limited to 10 people 
on video, so maybe this right. is Right, no, I think it's, it's their broadcasting got and it. people were just watching through it. But it's still, it still got the record as the largest ever Google Plus Hangout. Hangout, Hangout is, a, is a major sleeper hit for them. Major we were sleeper. We talking about this last time, right? Yeah, I guess it came up last time. Uh, somebody emailed me who's making a poker app inside of Google Hangouts. People oh, are going to build can you explain the Can you explain Hangouts again? Hangout is I decide in Google Plus that I want to have a video conference with up to 10 people. It's then a chat room. We it's a chat it. room, mm -hmm. but it dynamically <laughs> gives the yeah. microphone to whoever's speaking mm -hmm. based upon their microphone uh, hearing audio cues. So it sort of feels more dynamic, like uh, it's almost Got like it. it's spinning the conversation. It'd be it like down on automatic talk a lot. Yeah, it's it's automatic video switching. So there's actually a company. I mean, are you still, are you still loving Google Plus as much as always? I have 111,000 people on there, and I really enjoy it. Although I have to say the click-through rate has gone down. It's not as many people clicking through to my to what I'm doing. So, while I think there's a lot more people on it, I, I well, I think a lot more people have signed up for it. I don't know that people are using it every well, day you, like when, I am. The other thing that you talked about, though, is that you, I remember you said a month ago it's got the best click-through rate, but naturally as everybody gets more followers and there's more things in your stream that's correct everybody's there's a little bit of that and i think that some people are not coming back to check on it yeah. so i think that the content in it is better but i think it's still a little bit clicky i still post spam but I never also check. is becoming a spam much is becoming a problem, problem. which is a good as sign as it grows spam is exponentially um, getting worse and worse yeah i'm getting a lot of spammers lot it's a little bit it's becoming an issue um, people are just posting spam in your just people come comment on anything you post they, they know that i have a um, lot of followers and they'll just drop links in there it's still or, extraordinary you know. the quality of the content i still think it's going to become the second most viable social network you know right behind facebook and i think it could I take linkedin yeah, LinkedIn's not really a social network. It's a resume database. It's you a know? really sleeper killer aspect yeah. to they Google to Plus it. that people, I, they're, the, Google's leveraged it really well in that you're seeing artic, go, re, regular organic Google search results now are showing this person wrote this yes. article. Or they he, plussed it. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. he has this many followers and he's yes. tagged as a leader in technology. Yeah. yeah, it's basically social search. I mean, they're going to... The sort order of your searches will be based upon. It's not just social. I mean, this is somebody I have no connection to whatsoever. It's that they're, yes. they're quantifying this guy as a, a, an authority in technology. And getting and that's more why followers. He's so you're a New York Times writer, and you're David Pogue. And when your story comes up in search, it shows how many followers you have, which then sends people directly to David Pogue's right. Google Plus page, right. which routes around right. the New York Times. Right. So now Google is making individual authors more important right. than the platform the, they're, than the platform they're, they're, they're on, on than their that. publisher. Why? Yeah. That is why are they doing they that? They did that. Well, going back to Mahalo. I think they're trying to crack. Oh, yeah. I think they're trying they're to disaggregating. They're disaggregating the publishers. So yeah. they're they're basically saying, hey, let's go directly to the writers. And by the way, what did Google do with the failed attempt at uh, what was their Wikipedia killer called? No. No. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They were trying to promote individuals. What yeah. are they trying to do with YouTube? Promote individuals. I think that they're secretly trying to, with Google Plus, empower individuals to give up working at the New York Times to have their own site to be viable in Google Plus, and they will share ever new ad revenue yeah, in Google yeah. Plus with people individually. If you share ad revenue in Google Plus, it becomes a New, a New York Times killer. Mm -hmm. Because then you could leave the New York Times, mm -hmm. put AdSense around your post in Google Plus. You can do that today. Take 65, you can't, but, but, but you don't. Yeah, but they did sense. it in YouTube. And yeah. they did it in and they but, did but, it in but, Blogger. All right, but let's say you and got it would a be successful job. here. But let's say you got a job making a couple hundred grand a year. Okay, and let's That's say you get at the New York Times. Okay, yeah, maybe they yeah. pay the top guys a hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Sure. Really? I, yeah. well, I heard. But anyway, the very different one. They're paying the reporters these days. Well, I mean, but anyway, you, you had to put the top. Three, right. But here, yeah. let's, say, right, let's, let's say let's, let's put it a hundred. Okay. Now let's say I get a quarter million followers on my Google Plus page. Okay. And I start publishing there, and those people do three, four million page views of my content, right? Let's just say it's three million page views and I get a $10 CPM on that, that's 30,000 a month. What if I get a $1 CPM on it, it's $3,000 a month. It's the same thing that they're doing in YouTube, which is individual content owners could leave, maybe not this year, it's starting to happen, but maybe in two or three years, you're, you're an individual content producer on somebody's YouTube channel, now you start your own. The other telling point is that Panda was really against the platforms, the big mega platforms that, right. that were against who's writing this content. They want to right. focus it more on the uh, authority figure. Yeah, of, I think that they're anti-establishment that way. They want to crack the big... Well, they want to be the, the authority. Right, yeah, but, they the want, answer, but yeah. by the way to do it subversively is to say, oh, individual author, you can make more on our platform owning your content and working on your own terms right. than 
by working for the man. Because they'd rather it be like read David Pogue on Google than go to the New York Times. I mean, sometimes you just, we, I mean, as smart as Google is, like they're trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, think I, think there's some pro I think profit. there's some 28-year-old product manager that's like, hey, I think it's going to be cool to put these pictures in search. Let's try this. And they throw it up there, and they do test data, and they see what happens. And then right. we give them credit that they've got this master like plan, this, uh, Bond this intermediate the New York this Times. This has been an amazing episode. Thank you so much to our friends at SurveyMonkey. <laughs> and our friends at MailChimp. E -e -e. Give me one e -e, no. Tyler. Come on. No, no. Tyler will never do it. No. Oh, watch this. Long. Give me a little e -e. <laughs> See? I'll do it. Give me an ooh. ooh. Like, like a... <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, you, ooh, ooh, ooh. there you that, go. Very good. Yeah. See, Lon plays no, a lot. What, what I will do is, they, and I guess they are on the Very Tuesday good. shows, the GoTo Meeting sponsor. Yeah. Somebody asked that has no knowledge of the show mm -hmm. was asked me specifically to do a GoTo Meeting with them. Uh huh. Uh, so I was like, I just got to throw that out there. I love okay. It when, yep. Carolyn, did you give away the galaxy to somebody? Okay, go ahead and you tell people who won. Put it in the chat room. I'll read it right now. You type it in the chat room, I'll see who you're going to give it to. The Galaxy S goes to Lon Harris. What? What? No, it goes to it. Jason Azar. I'll take it. No, Tyler Crowley. Steep decline. Here we go. Who is it going to? Jason Calacanis? London Calacanis? Drum roll. Fondue Calacanis. Fondue wins it. Let's see the big wide shot. You can see the bulldogs hanging out on the set. There you go. There's some bulldogs right. on the set there. That's some bulldog. Oh, it's it's Lon's uh, bald spot cam right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the bald spot <laughs> cam. Where will the view? I don't know. It's just a little bit. You're doing okay. You're doing okay. There, yeah. You're doing okay. Nice. Did we say who won? I can't see. You did. It went by too fast. Who won? Bookie Kingpin. There you go. Bookie Kingpin. I have, okay, there you go. The bookie Fine one. Is that my bookie? Because I owe him bookie 10 dimes from last week's Giants game. I think that'll pay for it. It's okay. not just the phone. He wants three points off the VIG. Too, hey, is... thank you, Jason Nazar from DocStock. And if you guys want to get a special offer from DocStock, use the code TWIST. Yeah, you can pull up the page if you go to... Uh, yeah, pull up that page, it's everybody. On my, it's it's on Lon, Lonnie Donnie's there. You use the code what? But if you go to docsock.com uh, forward slash premium forward slash offer, ah, and then put in the code premium. twist, premium right slash now. offer, uh, and you'll put in the get, code twist. You'll get this first three months premium free. subscription, totally free, no credit card, just get it free for twist users. Docsock.com slash premium slash offer, use the promo code twist, and you will get the premium for free for three months. Do I have to put a credit card in? No. Oh, I like totally that. Totally free. Mm. Totally, really free. totally free. Put that on the uh, twist list as well. Peter Haran, thank you so much. Who can we? How, how do people find you? Just follow at Peter Haran. Uh, Peter C Haran, H O R A N, on Twitter. There you go. And uh, Tyler Crowley, I will see you in London next week yes. for the Power of One conference. Yes. And then I uh, will take the channel over to Paris. We're yes. gonna have a meetup. Boom. Meet up in London. Meet up in Paris. It's a bone. <laughs> We're gonna be. It's gonna be <laughs> awesome. I want to know if you're gonna. I, you're I wanna... gonna love Pulo Pot. I'm gonna take you oh, yeah. to Pulo. Can you get a reservation yeah, actually, for us? Give, give, give me restaurant recommendations to get back. I will. For very elite, no, snobby you... places. Absolutely. Right. No, 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 no. I have. <laughs> can you get a reservation for eight at Pulo Pot? Seriously, for the Carolyn, can take a note message note there, please. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Pulo Pot for uh, Saturday night. I want to get like uh, eight people to go there. Nice. Lon Harris, uh, thank you again. Ranker.com. What an amazing site to rank everything you love. And uh, can I just say, if yes. you follow at, we're running a. Uh, contest of on course. our Twitter right now. Sure. Follow at Ranker on Twitter, just R-A-N-K-E-R. We have at Ranker. Wow. Follow at Ranker. We're giving away a couple copies of the new Elder Scrolls Skyrim video game next week to oh, very followers. Cool. Cool. How about an iPad? We'll work, we'll work up to that one. Okay. It's, All right. it's, it's a, it's I'm a joking. hot I'm new joking. game. I'm it joking. comes out next week. Hey, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next time on This Week in Startups. All right, Bernie.